Hello everyone, Jake here for FM Scout. Welcome to today's video where I'll be giving you a rundown of how to rebuild a club in the most successful, the most efficient way in FM23. We're going to be focusing on the things you should do as soon as you take over at a club to start making things head in that right direction that will hopefully lead to trophies and wins and overall success. To do so, I'll be taking over at a club here that I don't know too much about myself, Borussia Mönchengladbach. I'm actually going to be doing a full rebuild of this on my own channel five seasons all in one video so if you want to check that out that'll be linked in the description down below for any of you guys if you want to watch but before we get started don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoy subscribe for more and let us know if there's any tutorials you'd like to see next or if you have any questions but I'm going to guide you through the process I take when taking over a new club to get a rebuild started in the best way possible now I'm not saying that this is the only way you can do things it's obviously not playing your own way but I'll try and give you as many tips and suggestions as I can here to make your life a little bit easier. So let's imagine you've came into a club here in Mönchengladbach and you know nothing about the team, the players, the tactical style you're going to play. This is what I do first and foremost. Now, the first thing you might do if you want to is check out the club info, the club vision, the things the board are looking to see from you. You might check out your squad and that's all well and good. They're the things we might do in an obvious case. Maybe you check your transfer budget as well. But once I know the general history of the club and what the board want from me, I'm going to take a look at their finances, analyze where the club is at, both in terms of their debts and loans, but also what we've got in the balance and the transfer budget. And this is where the first tip that I will give you comes in straight away. I always head over to the transfer section to transfer clauses. I bring it up in a lot of tutorial videos, but so many people just didn't even know this section existed before they hear about it. It's the transfer clauses section where you can actually sell clauses or buy clauses. This can give you some instant cash or save you money in the long run, but it's particularly useful to sell clauses at the start of your save. Any clause that you can action will have a little pound sign next to it. As you can see, we have one on Valentino Lazaro, where apparently we get 15% of his next transfer fee will be given to the club. Now he's valued at about what? two, three million pounds at this point. He's 26 years of age. Currently, he's out on loan at Torino. Is there an option to buy? There is for 4.7. Now, this is where you make your choice. Either you're going to hang on to this clause and hopefully get 15% when he gets his next transfer fee, or in some cases, you might want some instant cash to improve a team, particularly at the start of your save. Like for me, yes, Lazaro might move on in two seasons time, but a million pounds to me then won't be as useful as 300,000 pounds would be to me right now, because it means I can start getting my rebuild on the way. In a few years, I might already have the players that I want anyway. So I'm going to get some extra cash into my budget. All I'll do is click sell clause. We'll get 300k for that. And now if we go to our transfer budget, it will have increased by that little amount that will give us some more money to spend. Sometimes you might not have any clauses. Other times you might have ones that will give you two or three million. I remember a few years ago, if you were playing as Chelsea, you could go and sell like 20 million pounds worth of clauses for Eden Hazard to Real Madrid. So it's definitely worth checking these out, particularly if you're at a club that has sold some big players in the past. You might be able to get some cash in really easily. So always check the transfer clauses. And that is the first thing that I do, because now I know what budget I'm really working with going forward in the transfer window. Next, I head straight to the development center, find any players that are maybe two and a half stars or more. These two star players, I'll probably leave them for a little bit. But what you're looking for here is any players that are of good ability that will be hiding in your dev center. The worst thing you want to do is say, sign a right winger because your team doesn't have a right winger. You get that player in for 10 million and then you realize, oh, there was someone in the dev center the whole time who we could have played and developed from our own academy. So always have a check there if there's any big talents. And if they are good enough, then feel free to promote them into your first team because that's going to help us later when we're analyzing the weaknesses and the strengths of our squad and where we need to improve in the market. So head to the dev center, figure out what's going on, check out your under 18s, your under 19s, your under 21s, whatever it is. Find the players with high potential. See if there's any that you want to start incorporating into the first team early because that will influence where we go with our transfers. Another thing that's particularly useful if you don't know too much about the club or the league you're managing in is to head over to the competition section. In there, there's a few things that you can learn about the league straight away. If you know nothing about the league itself, check out the rules page. Here you'll find out how many Champions League places there is, where you need to finish to get what reward, if there's a playoff relegation, which you can see there is here. You can find everything from registration rules to financial rules. All of these things you can find here. If you don't know the league, that's extremely useful. But even if you know the league and you know the club you're playing with, one thing that I would definitely suggest 
suggest you do is go over to the season preview tab in competitions because what this will tell you is where your team should really be expected to come based on the talent in your squad. Your board might be telling you they want top four. They might be telling you you want to avoid relegation. That's their own personal preference. Whereas the season preview gives you a good idea of how good your team is in relation to other teams. For example, our Munchen Gladbach team here is predicted to come sixth in the league. But this does show us that with the squad we've got here, we should be looking at Europa League, Conference League sort of spot with the team we've got, which is always good to know. You also get to see the best 11 in the league, which will allow you to see if you've got any stars. But another section that people don't know about is the key players section. This highlights the best players in the league in order with a maximum of two per club. So you can see Bayern have got the two best players in the league. Then you've got one from Dortmund in Marco Royce and in Kunku and then Bellingham. But what we're looking for here is how far do we have to scroll down to find our players? It's not too far, but we get a good idea here of who two of our best talents are. Firstly, Jonas Hoffman. So I know I kind of want to build around him. On top of that, we had Marcus Taram. So we learned a little bit about him as well. Okay, he's a good player that we want to use. Obviously, these are names you might know already. But if you didn't know anything about the club, this is a good way to get an idea of who your stars are. Now that we know about our key players, it's time to start familiarizing yourself with the squad. And there's a few things you can do to work that out. Now, some of these are quite obvious. Some of them you might never have thought about. So straight away, obviously, you're looking at your squad. I like to just quickly click the ability button to see who our best players are and also the potential button to sort by the players who have the most potential, the ones I might want to build around nice and easy. But did you know if you hit this down arrow here and go to contract, it will show you everybody's contract. You can sort by wage to find the players that may be on high wages that you want to sell off. But what I always do at the start of every save at the start of every season is I click this button here, expires in the contract section. That will then filter your team by the players whose contracts are expiring soon so we can get an idea of whose we might want to renew. I like to plan two years in advance. So I'll be going from Rami at the top here to Nico Elvedi at the bottom and analyzing each one of them to see if it's about time to give them a new contract. What you don't want is to get into that situation where a player's only got a year left and you might get the situation that we've got with Marcus Taram here where there is no way for me to give him a contract because he has decided he's going to explore his options once the deal is over. And that can happen when your player gets within a year of his contract ending. So it's a good idea maybe to go through Joe Scally, offer him a new deal. Before we start signing other players, let's secure the talent that we want to stay at the club. And if not, we can also find sellable assets here who've maybe got a year left that we think, you know what, we don't need to buy a Sipple here. Let me try and move him on as quickly as possible to get some cash in. Don't worry, there's a lot more to analysing the squad that we're going to do in a second, but I did mention earlier that you can filter by a player's ability and potential to find who's got the highest star rating. Now, star ratings are a good indication of how good a player is, but they're not an exact science, but we're going to move on to something now which can make these star ratings a lot more accurate, which will give us a better depiction of our squad. And we'll move back on to how to analyse your squad in a second, but quickly to show you you. This is something I always do at the start of every save when I'm trying to rebuild a club is I go over to the staff section. Now I'll talk a bit more about the staff section and the responsibilities page later. But if you go down to responsibilities and then advice and reports, you want to go on to the one that says provides player reports and choose your staff member with the best judging player potential and judging player ability rating, which you can find by just clicking through your staff members. But there's a good chance it'll be your head of youth development that will know the most about your players. So I'm going to give this job to Marco Sandmola here. So I'm going to go responsibilities, advice and reports, go to provides player reports and change that to our head of youth development, Mirko Sanmola. Previously, it was Christopher John who only had 13 judging player ability and 13 judging potential. So now we should have a bit more accurate of a representation of how good our squad is. If you have a look now, we can see that Hoffman is considered the best player. It looks like his rating of Taran was a lot lower than what we originally thought. If we go to potential as well, we can see he really likes Mano Kone. He really likes Luca Nets, but he's actually got Joe Scally with less potential than what he had before. So it's always a good idea to do this to get the most accurate report possible. But let's go a bit further into how you can analyze your squad. And to do so, we are going to go to the squad planner screen, go to report and to assistant report. Now here, you can get a lot of information about your team, whether it's your good youth prospects, where your weaknesses are, all of these things are very useful. I'm not going to go through every single one, but just by reading these, you can get a good idea of what your team lacks. But if you want a more visual representation of that, go to the comparison screen, because here you can get an idea of where your squad is compared to other teams in the Bundesliga. Everything from average age, average height, average transfer value. These things aren't going to mean too much for us when it comes to analysing our squad, other than maybe seeing if you've got an old squad, if you've got a young squad. But you can find a lot more information by clicking on these tabs up here. So you could go by all positions. You could go to technical, mental, physical. If we go into the physicals, for example, what this is doing is comparing the average acceleration in our team to the rest in the league. And we're trying to look for any bars here that are particularly low or particularly high. 
because that will tell us a lot. I've noticed here in the mental section when it comes to positioning, we have got the best in the league, which is good. If we go to the physical attributes, things are looking okay there. You can filter on positions as well. So I'm looking at the physical attributes of our midfielders compared to other midfielders in the Bundesliga. I can see our agility is particularly low. So maybe I want to look for some more dynamic midfielders in the transfer market. You can do the same for your mental attributes, maybe highlight, say, just the strikers and see, okay, actually our strikers are very good when it comes to their mentals. Our midfielders are okay. Defensively, also pretty good. And in general, this is a very good way to get an idea about your team and where you stand compared to other clubs in the division. Whilst we're in the squad planner, head over to the experience matrix as well. This will tell you a lot about your club in terms of where players are in their growth. So we've got four players in the experience section, quite a lot of players in their peak, a few emerging talents and a few players who are considered developmental players. So I think we need to find a few more developmental players, maybe another experienced player to add to the team. But this is a good mix. The worst thing you want is all experienced players who are old and coming to the end of their career or no one in their peak and all development players. You want a bit of a mix to give you that nice age profile in the team of some leaders, some younger players and some players that are playing at the very top of their game right now. Heading back to the responsibilities section, this is always a good thing to do at the start of any save. Decide on the things that you don't want to do yourself, whether that's turning media duties off and giving them to someone else by hitting delegate here. Someone else can do those jobs. Maybe you want to not do training anymore. You can do the same there. You can delegate that away. One thing that I find is quite beneficial and some people won't agree with this is the staff situation at the club. I find recruiting staff, handing them new contracts can be quite tedious. So instead, what I do is I fill the key positions myself, like head of youth development, director of football, technical director, and then I delegate responsibilities to them. So for example, with the staff section, once I've got a good technical director, I go through and I delegate it so that they're in control of the hiring and firing. So it looks like Roland Verkus here is our director of football. He's a good one. He's in charge of everything to do with the staff, hiring, firing, offering them new contracts. And hopefully if he does a good enough job with that, we'll start to see over time our staff situation get a lot better without us having to do anything. Some people like to do it more hands-on, but for me, this is a good way to get your staff improved with minimal effort. And yeah, like I say, go through your responsibilities, decide the things you don't want to do and get them out your way so you can avoid the emails, you can avoid distress and focus on the things in FM that you enjoy. Obviously a good idea to check the dynamics tab, see how good your team cohesion and club atmosphere is. At the start of your save, they'll mostly be average, but if you're in a team where they've just signed 15 players, this team cohesion is going to be low. You can also check out the social groups and see how players are set out. Maybe you can see we've got four social groups here. That's not what we want. Ideally, everyone would be in one social group, maybe two at most. So we need to try and work on that to get our team bonded closely. You can do that through training and also just being at a club for a long time. Some players will start to gravitate towards others and form tighter social groups. So it's a good idea to get a feel for the dynamics at your club. And we're learning a lot about our club already and we're nearly ready to start looking for some players, signing players, selling players. But first, we kind of want to work out what tactic we're going to play. Some people might want to do this straight away. I like to do it about now. Now, some of you might have a tactical style that you're going to play no matter what team you're at. That's fair enough. Some might use a downloaded tactic. Some might want to just always use a 4 2 3 one Gagan press, whatever you want to do. But one thing that I always suggest is there's a reason that there's these thumbs on the tactic section. That's your assistant saying we suit these tactics quite well. So it might be a good idea to use one of them at least to start off with. So I'm going to click Gagan press here. And then it looks like the 4 2 3 one is the one being suggested it suits our team the best. So let's start off with that. Now you can go ahead and tweak the tactic as much as you like. I'm not going to do that here. But the reason that we fill this in is because now when we go to the squad planner, we get a review of every single position and how much depth we've got in that area. We can filter this squad planner down, get rid of players from the second team, for example, of under 19s. We can add any players that we want in. Maybe we really want to see how Jonas Kirkson looks compared to others. All of these things you can do nice and easily. And this is where you're going to probably learn the most about your squad in terms of talent and depth. So you might go through position by position and get an idea now that we've got these accurate coach reports as well of where we are weak. So goalkeeper, we've got two decent ones right back. Um, there's a couple of players there, but we do know that Elvedi is a centre back. So maybe we need to sign a right back. At centre back, we've got a lot of good options, which is nice. And at left back, we have got Ben Sabani here, who looks like our best. And Luca Nets is a young player to back him up in midfield. We're looking quite light there, actually. Kramer Kone, Itakora as a centre back. Weigel's in on loan. And Newhouse is probably our best there. In this attacking midfield role, we've got a few players that can play there. Hoffman, Wolf, Lars Stindl is up there as well. We get an idea of how good we are on the wings. And we can start to figure out where we're lacking players. For example, knowing that Plea is old and Stindl is old and Tram won't be staying. Maybe we need to identify a new striker. Maybe we need another right winger because there's not too many options out there. And this is when you can start thinking about transfers and sales that you might make. Sales as 
well, because you might look at a position such as, say, centre-back. We've actually got one, two, three, four, five centre-back options here. Maybe we can sell one. Let's take a look at Mamadou Decore. Maybe if he's no good, you can sell him, make some cash. It's a good way to figure out where your team is strong and weak, because then you can analyse it in the market. So that's how I get Rebuild started. Familiarise yourself with a dev centre. Get some money in from the transfer clauses. Use the season preview to figure out where your club is in the league and how well you're predicted to do. Sort your staff responsibilities out. Get your coach reports from the right person. Put a tactic in place to start analysing your squad. Compare it to other teams in the league and break down where you need to improve going forward in your rebuild. But there we go. That's the end of today's video. Hopefully you found it useful. Smash the like button if you have and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.